Well, if you're just a fraction as addicted to technology as I am, you are really excited about the Windows 10 technical preview that Microsoft just made available. In this micro nugget, we'll go ahead and take a look at the installation of this early version of Windows 10. Now, of course, when you go to download something like this, Microsoft wisely tells us, hey, look, this is a very early preview version. Don't put it on a production machine. So what a perfect place to put it. How about Hyper-V? Yeah, this is a Hyper-V setup on a server 2012 system. I'm going to go up to File, make that action, new, virtual machine, and we'll go ahead and name this Win 10 Tech Preview. And we'll go ahead and store the location of this virtual machine in a folder that I've created called VMs. Next up, we'll make it a generation one type of virtual machine. That's fine. Next up, we'll give the startup memory. I'll go ahead and provide this Windows 10 preview 8 gig and use dynamic virtual memory for the virtual machine. I want to make sure that I'm getting a good sense for it and that it's got plenty of memory. I'm going to go ahead and have it connect via our gigabit ethernet virtual switch and we'll create a virtual hard disk called win 10 tech preview in my virtual hard disks location and we'll give it oh how about 30 gig should be more than enough for the windows 10 preview and whatever whatever few applications that i want to test in the new windows environment i'll say next and we're going to install from the iso that i downloaded from microsoft it's in software let me browse and there it is right there i'll grab it say open say next and we are ready to finish up the configuration of this virtual machine now what's going to happen is i'm going to right click and connect to this particular virtual machine and it of course says hey look it's turned off i'll use the start button in order to start this particular virtual machine, it's going to hit that ISO image and look at this, the installation of Windows 10 has begun. And again, if you're anything like me, you're pretty excited to see the installation of this new operating system from Microsoft. Here we have the selection of language, time and currency and keyboard. That's great. I'll choose install now. By the way, as you can see, this is looking amazingly familiar to the Windows 8 installation. And some of you viewing this micro nugget right now are thinking, let's hope that's where the similarities end. All right, we'll accept the terms of the license agreement. Say next, we'll do a custom installation. There's our 30 gig of virtual disk that we provided in Hyper-V. We'll say next and we are at the installing Windows phase. This will take quite some time. Obviously, I don't want to bore you with this progress, so I'll pause the video and we'll return at the very next user input prompt. So we'll let this run, the device might reboot, and I will make sure to unpause the video so you don't miss any of this installation. All right, well, here we are back, and here we have Express settings that we can turn on for things like protection against unsafe files and using Bing and certain Internet Explorer settings. For brevity's sake here, I'll just choose Use Express Settings. Next, it says, let's set up your account. Okay, so we know there's a new type of an account in the Microsoft ecosystem, if you will, and that is your online account. As you know from my Windows courses here at CBT Nuggets, I have kind of a dummy account that I use for this and we'll input those credentials here in this particular step. Terry.Francona at gmail.com. And for you baseball fans out there, you know that Terry Francona is the coach that brought my Red Sox to the World Series for the first time. Uh, let's see my dummy password on that account. And by the way, if he ever asked me for this email address, of course, I would surrender it to him. So we say next. And it's going to say, all right, let's verify that you are who you say you are to help protect your account. I'm going to say, you know what? I can't do this right now. I can't be bothered with this right now. I'm making a micro nugget on this new Windows 10 after all. 
Now it says, okay, we've found settings from another PC under this account. Do you want those to migrate? No, we'll set this up as a new PC and don't sync any of the start screen layout. By the way, right now we're starting to get nervous about the user interface. I don't want to even hear about the start screen anymore. So uh, now shall we hook our OneDrive account to this machine? Yeah, that's fine. Next. And here we go. They're setting up our account. I'm getting pretty excited here. It seems like we are nearing the end of this installation. And of course, what most of you are excited to see is coming up. What is the UI by default? What's the user interface going to be like by default? Now we're going to get teased a little bit. It's going to finalize these settings. <laughs> so here we go. It's telling us, okay, things are being set up for us. I'll go ahead and pause the video here as settings are finalized. And when we return, we'll be seeing the new user interface of Windows 10 for the first time. Pretty exciting. Okay, good sign. Installation just dropped me off right here. Look at this, the desktop. Wow. In fact, that's the Bing picture of the day. I saw that on my Windows 8 machine. Let's click this button here in the lower left corner. This was embarrassingly, I believe, for Microsoft in 8.1, bringing us to the start screen that so many disliked. We click it now. Ah, yes. We see the familiar start button, although it's updated with live tiles. Notice there was just a pop-up for me to provide Microsoft feedback about this particular new feature. By the way, I've played with this before, and I like it. So a lot of people kind of wince when they see the tiles. I don't mind them at all as part of a traditional start button. Notice the start shutdown behavior is back. So we go start power options. And what we're going to do is select restart because what I'd like to go ahead and demonstrate is what would happen on a subsequent reboot of this particular system. So here we are upon reboot, a familiar splash screen, uh, we click on it, we sign in, and we are brought, let's hope, to the desktop on this particular machine, since it is a desktop machine, and we are brought to the desktop. So no trace of the old Metro interface or the start screen, as Microsoft was calling it. Really interesting, because you might have individuals preferring that interface on a tablet type of device, but... So far, nothing like that visible in the technical preview of Windows 10. Now, in this particular micro nugget, remember, I did this installation of the tech preview utilizing Hyper-V inside of a server 2012 environment. Now, I just want you to know that I also tested this preview and in fact installed some of my favorite applications without a hitch on a Mac running VMware's Fusion. During the installation, under the latest version of Fusion, I just lied to Fusion and told it that it was Windows 8 that was being installed. And sure enough, it installed the Windows 10 Tech Preview without a problem. So another way to virtualize it that I have tested that works beautifully is Fusion running on a Mac. So in this micro nugget, we ran through the installation of the Windows 10 Technical Preview. I hope you had as much fun checking that out as I did. And be looking for future micro nuggets where we will detail some of the great new features previewed in this particular early release of Windows 10. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.